It's 645 on a Sunday morning, near Thanksgiving in 2015. I get paged. It's been escalated to me. Netflix customers in our East region are experiencing, starting to experience errors. The on-call has done an excellent job triaging, and she's determined that the issue is related to the inability to launch hosts. Now, this is a scenario that we've prepared for. It's one where we've tested region evacuation to be able to mitigate issues like this. Because we've tested this regularly, we have the confidence to initiate this region evacuation via chat. And within 15 minutes, all of our users are safely in another region. This is an example of an outage that we were able to mitigate the impact of on a day when many other companies felt the pain of this outage. I wish I could say that outages were on the decrease and that we all had less work to do, but the truth is quite the opposite. So much so, TechCrunch recently wrote an article titled, It Was a Really Bad Month for the Internet. We're used to Google and Netflix and Facebook and Twitter having outages. In some regards, we've become numb to them. But as our companies transition, as, every, as software eats the world, as every company becomes an online company, what we're recognizing is that this is a problem that many teams and companies are feeling. As every business's online revenue relies on the ability to win over and impress customers and interact on a near instantaneous basis, the bar has only risen. And I don't put these up to berate these teams. I have a great deal of empathy for the outages and the pain that they feel. That's why we're here. That's why we're talking about this, is to help improve this, to help prevent situations like this. If you've seen one of my talks, you've probably seen this diagram before. A little peek into what Netflix and Amazon used to look like, simplified versions of what they are today. This inherent complexity is contributing to the pain that we're feeling, to the outages that we're having. Microservices, the cloud, serverless, Kubernetes, these are all great tools in our toolkit, but they come at a cost. If we zoom out, this is a picture of the internet. Looks, looks awfully familiar compared to the last graphics. I would argue that the internet is humanity's most complex system. One that we no longer rely upon for convenience. One that we rely on for critical functions, for our government, for our healthcare, for our transportation. As technology continues to improve, we'll see more challenges. Autonomous vehicles, drones, the sky's the limit. And so at Gremlin, our mission is to help build a more reliable internet. I think it's evident why this is so important to us. But as the engineers that are charged with this responsibility, we take it very seriously. We know that when things go wrong, it impacts our mothers, our grandmothers, our friends, and our family. And so as we've thought at Gremlin, how do we help build a more reliable internet? How do we help accomplish this? Well, one of the lessons that I learned while at Amazon and Netflix, building tooling and advocating an approach like this, is that if you want engineers to do the right thing, you need to make it easy. And so, as we pondered on that, how can we make getting, starting, getting started with chaos engineering easier? How do we lower the barrier to entry? How do we reduce time to value? And so today, I'm excited to talk about a new feature that we're launching called Scenarios. Scenarios is the opportunity to take past incidents or outages that you've experienced to capture that entire experiment lifecycle and to be able to help other teams validate against this, to prepare it, and to test it over time. In particular, one thing that's very important beyond just causing failure is understanding the impact of failure. And so being able to capture the hypothesis, being able to take notes and capture your observations, knowing what the outcome of that experiment was. What is a successful chaos experiment? Well, in my opinion, it's one where you've uncovered a gap in your alerting or monitoring. It's one where you've verified that your system gracefully degrades where possible. And it's one where, if ideally, the system behaved the way you expected. 
More than that, it's about having engineers have a feeling of confidence in how they approach running these experiments. Many of you are familiar with the concept of the blast radius. We always want to start with the smallest experiment that will teach us something. But as we build trust and confidence in our system, we want to grow that impact. So helping first engineers visualize the impact of their experiments. And then second, giving them the tools to be able to manage that growth and that scaling within the framework of this experiment. So we can go from a single host to a single zone to a single region. We can start with the magnitude of introducing 10 milliseconds of latency and go to 100 milliseconds or a second. And this helps us to chain our experiments together in a safe and thoughtful way. What's really exciting about this is the opportunity for us to learn from real world outages. When I joined Amazon, one of the things I did is I found every postmortem that I could get my hands on and I read them in depth. While this might not be a perfect predictor of what will happen in the future, understanding the domain of what could go wrong, of how teams have handled it, of how you could think to prepare for your service is a really beneficial process. And so with recommended scenarios, we built out scenarios that you and your teams can use based on real world failures, real world outages. I'm gonna go into a couple of them in depth. We're gonna go way back in time to 2012, or what feels like way back in time in the internet world. Uh, the internet was young. Amazon had an ELB incident on Christmas Eve, 2012. Now, we don't have as much data as we do on some of the recent outages, so these are the few companies that really got stung by this. When I joined Netflix in 2013, the most important thing we were working on was region evacuation. Because of this incident, that was a catalyst for the company to prepare for such events. The story I told at the beginning is a story of the outcome of this work, of the success of being able to prepare diligently and prevent the pain from reoccurring in the future. With the Gremlin scenarios, you can test region evacuation easily, helping your teams or your company prepare and validate that you are able to evacuate a region, that your services behave the way that you expect. Next, I want to talk about the Dyn DDoS. This is actually the inspiration behind the DNS Gremlin. This is a day that showed us that many of our, most, a lot of our software depends upon DNS. It's a core part of our infrastructure. The ability for customers to reach us, the ability for us to direct and route traffic, and if we're using uh, DNS as service discovery internally, the ability to get work done within our stacks. And so it's very important to me to be able to test that we have a redundant DNS provider or that we understand what the implications are if DNS is unavailable. The last one I want to talk about happened just two years ago. S3 had an outage in US East 1. To many of us, S3 began as something that was non-critical, a place we could store things that we needed in cold storage or config. It wasn't as critical. But we actually learned this day that a lot of the internet relies on S3 to work correctly. This is a, another example of understanding how we can handle the failures of our dependencies. If you take away one thing from my talk, please test the failures of your dependencies. Whether it's internal or external, nothing is worse than thinking that you have a non-critical dependency to find out later that it can cause your customers pain and cause a bad day for your team. So the exciting thing about these scenarios is the ability to build them, to share them with your teams, to craft them to what fits your world, and to be able to choose from a library of existing ones that is a good starting point for teams that aren't sure where to begin or want to quickly prepare for common failure modes. So with that, I'm very excited to welcome you today. As Jacob mentioned, last year we spoke a lot about why would you do chaos engineering. This year we're really focused on how. How do you do chaos engineering? And I'm very proud of the program that our program committee has put together. We have a lot of people, a lot of practitioners that are going to stand up today and share with you the good and the bad, the pain they felt and the joys they've experienced in the hope that it will help hasten your journey and help you from feeling some of the pain that they've felt. 
It's as an awesome opportunity to network with your peers. And we're gonna have some fun events and games tonight to hang out. So we both want it to be educational and enjoyable. If you tweet it, feel free to use our hashtag. And for those who can't join you today or any of your colleagues that may be interested or following along at home, we're happy to live stream this event. And to everyone following along on the live stream, welcome. We're excited to have you remotely. Thank you very much.